Hello everyone, it is the Red Men TV podcast, the Mighty Reds got their campaign of attacking the league title up and running with a 4-3 win over Leeds United. I am Paul Machen, I'm joined by Sam Walker, by Steve Hoare and the man, the legend, Mr Chris Pajak as well. Um, sorry lads, I underserved you all on touch there, but look, look how happy he is. Um, <laughs> yes, anyway, um, right, we're going to dive straight into it, we've got a kick-off question that comes from Ross. Uh, I did ask people for some questions and I got a load of rubbish ones. Uh, I might have got some good ones, but I stopped at Ross's one, um, which he put out on the proper Redman Twitter account, which is, this is, is this, it's eating itself, it's fine. He says, Liverpool have a free kick 25 yards out in the dying seconds of a cup final. Which two players, one past, one present, are you nominating to secure that win and get the trophy? The man, the legend, Chris Pajak. Present, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh-huh. Um it was between him and Salah and I fancy Trent Moore. Um, mm. And then past, oh, it probably won't be the right answer, but it's my right answer, if you know what I mean. And I'm going with Gary Mack, um, just because of that one against it's not Everton. Specified. I think it's not specified how far out the free kick is, because exactly. you've got... You just both. don't know. What if it's what if it's in your own half or just edging into into their half? Yeah. I mean, these are the things that you have to take into consideration. Whereas I think he can take one from twenty yards. Or I think he can take one from forty-five. Well, I know he can take one from forty-five. Yeah. So yeah, there's my two. Okay, Sam. Yeah, there's no other answer but Trent's is deep for now. I think even Sally are pushing it there, Chris. To be honest, I can't even remember him getting one on target for us. To be honest, so Trent, <laughs> yeah, Trent wins that one. And I, interesting. Do you know what? I'm going to go a bit left field. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Jamie Redknapp. He had, he had a belter free kick on him yeah. back in the day. I remember that one against Blackburn that we didn't want to go in, but did. He, yeah. he, had, he had the postage stamp in him. So just, yeah, I'm going to go with Redknapp just to be a bit different. Absolutely. Stay. Yeah, Trent, obviously, is the pick there. I'm torn between two and I've gone a little bit more modern than the, than the lads. Um, obviously, Gerard, especially given the, the magnitude of the game, I mean, that's his, that's his moment, isn't it? Um Suarez as well, really good free kick taker. Um, but I'm going to go Coutinho actually. I'm going to go. I thought he was an amazing, amazing free kick taker. For a while he, he never got it, but once he nailed it down and got his technique sorted, you were almost thinking goal every time someone got fouled around the edge of the box. I know, like Liverpool looked like they were playing to get fouled around the edge of the box at some point. So I'll go Trent and Coutinho with an apology to Stephen Gerrard because it really should have been Stephen Gerrard. <laughs> <laughs> sad well I'm going to go um, the present one it's, you, you're right what's your other choice Shakiri, and all he's ever done is like hit the did he hit the post or bar with one and we were like oh that'd be good if he did that again and then I think he's played about four minutes since then um, in two seasons um, so yeah the, the, the slim pickings in the, in, the modern, in the modern team so yeah you're right but past Luis Suarez like he was the last Proper, proper free kick taker. I think we had again kind of what everything Steve said, but it's more true for Suarez. Um, like just it was like it was having a I, it, yeah, he was amazing, wasn't he? It's a pity he's a massive gobshite. Um, but yeah, there it is. I'll go Louis Suarez. Let us know yours in the comments. Uh, you can tweet us. I wonder if me. anyone's picking a relio in the comments. I, I, yeah. It, it was a yeah. consideration. I mean, John Arna Risa was there. If I was picking two from the past, I'd have Suarez and Risa. So you've got like You've got the Suarez for the right foot curler, and then if you just want to lay one off and have Reese, Reese belt one into the wall, um, just, to, the just, wall. <laughs> yeah, just to mix, just to mix <laughs> things up, um, then you've got that as well. Um, yeah, interesting one. Yeah, keep keep, the, keep your suggestions coming in the comments. Okay. Doing this on let, let, let's let's flip it on its head a little bit. One pa- present player who you absolutely would not want to be taking the free kick. Oh, Joel Matip. Joel Matip. <laughs> Absolutely, John Madden. I love John Madden. I think he's amazing. But there's no way in a million years he's beating the wall. He just isn't. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, hit, it's hitting the wall. It's one of those free kicks where you get really excited and then it just it fell up the first 12 hours and away. So, yeah, Madden. Is, is Virgil van Dijk really overrated at free kicks? or is Because he's got that no one. Knows, Paul. Yeah, yeah. He scored one about 15 years ago, didn't he? And then he's got that... the, training, the training video of him doing one. And everyone was like, ooh. And then he took, what was it, last season he took one for us or the season before? And everyone was like, oh, they're just taking it, they're just taking it. No, no, it's fine. Let's get back in the fancy tits. Um, yeah, oh, well, never mind. Um, right, we're going to move things on. Um, 
we um yeah we've got some topics to come up we're going to talk a, a little bit about the game at the weekend and the big talking point of course it's come on the back of it is whether joe gomez or joe matib should be the first choice partner for virgil van dyke Um there's talk that liverpool have still got two more signings targeted oh great that's gonna get everyone right riled up um and then whether rian brewster could be on the way out we did a bit of that on the reds transfer roundup show last week but yeah now um we're gonna talk about it on the podcast as well um but yes um i actually realise that I've not teed this up with Sam in any way, shape or form. Um, it is in the agenda. Hopefully he's got a merchandise advert prepped. It's a shake of the head. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Amazing. Right. Okay. Yeah. We've got some brand new uh, Redman merch available. Mugs, t-shirts and all. Uh, have a quick look at all that. Amazing. Yeah, some wonderful stuff up there. Um, yeah, go and check it out. Let's go have a little peruse. In fact, if you're watching on YouTube now, there should be uh, a little shelf underneath the video that's got the stuff. I say this every week. There should be. There should be. That's there so probably nice. is. Um, it's got yeah, the new go GTA to... stuff under there as well. Ooh, yeah, new uh, GTA designs as well. So go and have a little. Go have a little look. Have a little peruse while you're listening to this. Um, okay, so game of the weekend. Um, Sam, how are you feeling after the after the match? I think there's been. Look, there's a few, there's, there's there's plenty of talking points about what Liverpool can improve in that, but are we making a bit more of it out of it? I'm not sure four three is necessarily a, a fair reflection on 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 the balance of quality of the two sides on the day. Yeah, I think there's a few things to consider here. Like, I actually thought we'd win four two before the game. I was chatting to some of the lads I was with before we were watching it, and I thought I said we'll probably end up winning four two here. These are these have got a decent setup. They're a good side. There's so. What Leeds are is a very complex unit system, very fit. First game of the season. Loads of lads have been on international duty. We've had the odd little knock here and there. Some of them, like Trent, didn't have a pre-season. Uh, Henderson come back late. There's loads of reasons why it was never going to be a vintage performance. So the fact that we got three points for me should be the biggest factor. And I think I heard Chris say it about a thousand times over the last two weeks, Leeds are going to give people a bloody nose. He gave us a bloody nose, but we won the game. And, and I, I, you know, I don't think the results, apart from the odd twitchy bum when the clock struck 80, was in any doubt. I think we were always capable of winning the game. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm one of them who goes, there's loads to move on from that. There's loads to improve on. And we've got a full week together now. I'm confident going forward. There was a thing, wasn't there, Sam, where, yes, they gave us a bloody nose, but there were moments where it was a bit like in Liar Liar when Jim Carrey has to go and beat himself up in the toilets. Like, Liverpool did a lot of that, to th- did a lot of it to themselves. I don't want to sit here and discredit Leeds because I, I, I like their performance. I actually did. I, it, I begrudgingly give any positivity towards Leeds United. But, um, the, yeah, they, you know, they, they, there was something admirable about the way they played, but also Liverpool did for at least two of the goals basically shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, massively. And and, that, and that's it, isn't it? And that's why you shouldn't be too worried because that's not what we do all the time when we play in competitive football. Van Dijk doesn't do that. It, you know, In fact, I would say that I, I'll put my money on him to be improved massively and I'd be one of the best players on the ground um, next next Sunday against Chelsea because that's what he does. So the fact that they scored two goals where Trent and Gomez were terrible and then Verge was terrible, I'm OK with that because we can clearly sort that out, move on, you know, look look at the obvious mistakes and correct them. And like like I said, I th- I I want to give Leeds loads of credit as opposed to criticise the lads too much. I think they deserve it. They turned up to play, and we always looked like we had a gear in us. To be honest, um, the way we were playing, we just got a bit complacent at three two, didn't we? And that's all yeah. it was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chris, we um 
we had a bit of a chat about the about these things, but I wanted to drill down into the Mata Gomez stuff a bit because, I mean, look, there's a little part of me that suspects that there's always got to be a there's always there's always got to be a problem and there's always got to be a, a low hanging fruit solution. And I think if if Liverpool conceding three goals, if you just look at it at face value, you go, well, there might there's a defensive issue there. And then when you look at the back four, well. You're not going to swap. You don't want to swap Trent for and Trent's like, look, he's now the highest rated right back on FIFA. Um, you've got the the best centre half in the world in Virgil Van Dijk. Robertson actually had a good game, so there's, there was no room for criticism there. Best goal in the world, etc. It's always going to fall at the, on the on the lap, I think, of Joe Gomez in these situations. And when you've got this like old timey, you know, glorified memory of Joel Matip, and that's not to say he's not been brilliant for us. I think it's it become I don't know whether it's there's a real debate here or whether it is just it's just a very simple solution to go, well, well, we'll just put Matip in and that'll that'll fix any defensive problems Liverpool have got. I think it's it's a tough it's a tough thing to talk about the two players because there are things that Joel does better than Joe and there are things that Joe does better than Joel and it's what you're putting your weight into almost and what you think's most important. Now for me, you know, I, I read um, some of the quotes from Jürgen coming out at the weekend saying that, you know, defending's not something that you just get right and it stays right forever. Defending is an art that you have to work on each and every single week. Now, when I take that statement uh, of, from what Jürgen said and extrapolate that onto the two players, well, Joe's available each and every week, give or take, for the last year, because Joel started the season but got injured, and Joe brought, came in and was available throughout. You know, Joe played. Joe Gomez played. Was it twenty eight games last season? Joel nine games. If if defend if if what Klopp saying is true, which I believe that it is, and what we're saying is that you have to work on it each and every week, then you want to work on it with four lads that are going to be available each and every single week. Yeah. So as close as they are. Um, in each individual attributes and stuff like that and as good as they both are and they are very similar I think in terms of quality then add air on the side of the lad that's going to be available more to be honest yeah. with you and because that just that just makes it easier for everybody because it's not just Virgil van Dijk it's Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson as well yeah, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it, Steve? It, 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 the, the, the off-criticism of Liverpool's um, defenders is about the fitness things, and I don't think I think Gomez's fitness issues are slightly overstated. I mean, the thing that he missed loads of time for was a broken leg. I don't think there's any accounting for broken legs, but Matip, it shouldn't be escaped. He made nine Premier League appearances last year. He'd have, if he'd have been fit, he'd have played. You know, it, it, it's telling. You know, he was. Uh, he, he gets the opportunity very early last season, and I think he would. He, 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 he probably would have kept it if he was fit. But so I think Chris is right. There's, there's 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 more to it than just a case of quality. Yeah, to an extent, I agree. What the flip side is, you know, there are, <laughs> there are certain players who, if they get injured, the second they come back, they will get their place back straight away. So, God forbid, you know, Mo Salah does his hamstring as a month off. The first, as soon as Mo Salah's fit, he'll play. Yeah. Now, Matip never really got that opportunity because Gomez did do well. Um, my main worry about the defensive overall is that we've kind of lost, like. You know, the aura of you're not going to score against us. Teams have found it far too easy to score against Liverpool. And that's since, even before lockdown, I think that West Ham game at home, we were too easy to score against. Watford was a shambles the week after, although everyone put that on that Degsy Lovren's play to win. It was, it was more than just him. And can't, even you know, the week after the last game at Anfield with fans, Bournemouth go one up, dead early, dead easy. So Liverpool have let a lot of goals in. And more often than not, Gomez has been playing... Um, in fact, what you would call our first choice defence, Angolia, have been playing. We can't even blame Adrian for those ones, you know, because Alisson was back. It was only the FA Cup game, really, that, obviously, Atleti that he missed. Other than that, he played. So, something isn't quite right, it, it, whether it's personnel, tactics, men, mentality, other teams getting onto it. Whatever it is, something isn't right. Um, I always err on the side of just picking out who you think is the better player um, for your system. It's hard to know who that is. I, I personally think Matip is a better defender than, than Joe Gomez right now. I think Gomez has got the scope to get better and be like world class, like genuine world class. So there's, there's a there's an argument to be made for both of them. Um, what I would say is Liverpool started last season better defensively than the end of it, and when we were at our absolute best defensively, Matip was playing. That's a fact. He, he was. So it, it's it's how you want to look at it. I, I personally would go Matip, but 
that's what, but now having gone with Gomez, the manager, if, if the manager thinks Gomez is the right player, you can't just bomb him out after one game. That's yeah. nonsense. That, that just does nobody any favours. If, if, if Gomez played because Matip isn't 100%, then you can always say, listen, Joel's my, Joel Matip's my first choice. You spotted him because he's not fit. Yeah. But if the, if the manager's decided that, John, that Gomez is the man, then you can't just you can't bomb out after one game. Because to be honest, if that was the case, you'd be bombing the fellow next to him as well because he was crap as well. So, <laughs> yeah. so you, you, and the goalie was rubbish. You can bomb him out. So you can't just do it on one game. I, I personally would err on the side of Matip, but I don't think it's like the be all and end all conversation. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I agree with most of what you're saying, but I disagree on the terms of like the bet. You know. Liverpool's best defensive spell of last season comes when Gomez is playing alongside Virgil van Dijk. You know, there's that... Yeah, well, it's true. Liverpool stop conceding goals. When Dejan Lovren goes out the team, Gomez comes in. Because Mat- Matip's in, gets injured, Lovren comes in. Lovren goes down and Gomez comes in. Now, there's some, there might be some correlation with, like, Jordan Henderson playing in DM as well in that time. But that spell from, like, November to the end of to, to, to January, Gomez is, is the, the, cent- the centre-half. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we become imperious in that time. And that's when we, you know, we grind and things out. Um, God, Sam, I mean... It, it, if you had to, if you had to choose between the two, is that is it as simple as like a quality thing, or you have you got a rounded a rounded view on it? Yeah, I think you've got to take both into account. I agree with what Steve said. That was a brilliant comment that about the fact that Salah or Verge come straight into the team. Allison did the way at United last year, straight back, no no waiting for a cup game. I think with Gomez and Matty, they they've both shown over the last few years that they are, they have had spells out for different reasons. I I, I personally think Gomez is much more reliable fitness wise unless he gets his leg broken by a Burnley player. Yeah. But um, the thing is, you if you throw Matt up into the team away at Chelsea, you're asking a lot of him because Chelsea have got a new dynamic attack. We don't know lots about how they're playing at the moment. They've got really quick players. He's going to be rusty. He's probably I know they played the game against Huddersfield B was it the other day and they played against uh, Blackpool but. I, I think it would be much short-term playing Gomez against Chelsea is the smart move because you've got the cup game to follow against Bradford or Lincoln. That makes more sense. Get Matt up his minutes. If he looks imperious, bring him in. You know, potentially let him fight it out. But I think back to last season as well, and I think about the games that we lost, like Arsenal and even City, and I think, who do we th- who do we point out against City? Probably had the weakest game. Probably Robbo, uncharacteristically of him. Uh, against against Arsenal, it was was it was it Fabinho. Well, Gomez like, had an absolute stinker against Man City as well. If you, you know, yeah. oh yeah, he gave the pen away. Yeah, that's right. The ball with yeah. Sale and does yeah. that game. Yeah. So so you're right there actually. So the Man City games void, but I think the Arsenal game. I, I'm not really putting anything down to Gomez. I can't really think of loads of goals. I'm thinking that was horrendous from Gomez. He's looked a little bit shaky at times, but like obviously Van Dijk gives the ball away at Arsenal. He, he's at fault clearly against. Uh, um, for the second goal for Bamford the weekend but the ball shouldn't get to Gomez Trent should do a lot better so although he, he's at fault we should be criticising Trent first but I just think we're almost trying to pick too many holes into a, into a team that we know are capable of really really good levels and high levels so for me it would be Gomez for now see how Matic comes back and then they've got training to fight it out when they're both razor sharp they can both then sort of work at it and whoever Klopp sees in training and, and the horses for courses argument as well comes into play yeah. I think I think Paul, um, that what Sam just said there is what is most concerning for me is that I don't think it is just one player who you just change him and it'll be fine again. It's not like take a lot of an out against Wofford and we'll be sound next week because we'll put someone better than him in. It's our first choice lads, whether it's Gomez or Matip's kind of irrelevant at the minute. It's our first choice team who are letting too many goals in. And that has been the case ever since again, it wasn't even the titles won kind of thing. I think it's been in play before the lockdown. So I think there is something there that, whether it's just, like I say, it's been sloppy, silly mistakes more than anything. I don't think it's been like anything horrendous. They just need to stop now. You know, you've won the league, lads, and you've had your party, and we all excused Man City because, oh yeah, they're all on the ale and stuff, and, and blah, blah, blah. And after that, you know, all got a bit mad and no one really cared. But it's like switch on time now. Like, yeah. you know, it, it, it's not, it, it, isn't, it isn't funny anymore. I thought, for example, I thought last season against Norwich, Norwich, attacked better than Leeds and created more chances. Mm-hmm. And I was more concerned coming out of that game thinking, Christ, that was... And to be fair, Gomez got bombed out pretty much straight after that. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, oh, I don't know. Whereas Leeds, I don't think they absolutely tore us to bits. We were just a little bit stupid. Like, the, the, both the, the first two goals are nonsense goals. Just absolute nonsense. It's not anything like... 
Don't let the lad have the ball in the middle of the pitch with that much room. Trent, don't let that guy do what he did to you. Foul him if you have to. Yeah. Gomez yeah. does absolutely nothing. And then the second goal, Van Dijk, just because he is the best player defender in the world, acts like he's the best defender in the world. You see it in Van Dijk's body language. I, you watch that yeah. goal back, and he, 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 as soon as he's made contact, he relaxes. He goes, ah, job done. And he's like shocked. He's almost like, you know, if, if it was an episode of Scooby-Doo, he'd have jumped into Shaggy's arms when he saw the, uh, the ball <laughs> drop, to, drop to Bamford. Uh, but yeah, go on, Chris. I think there's more to it than, than all of this and I think we're being slightly unfair to be honest with you because I think you know we've all talked about it all summer how this is going to be a strange season you know with the pre-season and stuff and what we're doing is what we always do is focus on Liverpool and every team's going to make a load of mistakes in the first few weeks I reckon until until we get up and running properly until they are bedded in absolutely properly so I understand why Liverpool fans myself included in this are like talking about the errors because they're there you can see them but but you need to have a forgiveness about it as well. I think the biggest thing that you should take out of that, and I think it's something Sam said earlier, is we won the game. And, and that's a trait that we showed all last season. And, you know, it's going to take time. You know, Trent and, and Robbo were probably both out of position on one of those goals. The first one, they were both deeper than the centre-halves. You not you never take your positioning from the full-backs. You take your positioning from the centre-halves. So if Trent and Robbo take the position from the centre-halves, the lad's offside, but, yeah. it, but it's not done. And then the other thing I think that the teams are starting to do now is they've struggled for a long time to really break through our press. And what we've seen over the post restart um, and in the first game of the season is teams are now attacking us down the side because that's the hardest place for our two eights to get to you know and then that vacates space in the middle so there's going to be a level of adjustment I think that needs to happen as well and that's what Steve's talking about with the tactical side of things is that, that you know the pressures that we, we that have been working for us we're going to maybe struggle a little bit more but yeah. again we'll react we'll evolve and we'll change and we've got boss players so we'll be alright this is for this is it is that like the, the look at the the situation and again this is one of those situations where it's pro, it, it's true to varying degrees to other football teams but right pre-season's been mad this is not a team that's been you know drilled in the same way that it would normally have and I say that because we, it's normally like the boss front lads that we're missing you know that we've had the forwards all all summer and they they all look quite good in their own in, in their own sort of ways but the defense which has been the foundation for so long like to it you know I say Trent hasn't Trent hasn't played the lad actually we put in front of the the defence this time and Jordan Henderson hasn't played and then three of the other three of the other lads have been well in fact the whole back four were on international duty I think as as, as well and you know it's it's it feels like excuse making but it, it it kind of is what it is you know when when they're all back and back in the swing of things it's the first game of the season and I think we're looking for causality in a one it, with with one game's worth of data almost and you can tag on the charity shield and a bit of pre season or whatever if we really really want to. But also, I don't necessarily think that you have to. Go on, Steve. My worry over it all, but again, it's, it's, it's a minor worry because we're, we're sitting here as champions of the world and, and the league, so it's not like the biggest concern. But my worry is that when any team now will come to Liverpool and think, you know what, let's have a go because we can get something. Yeah. And Man City felt, I think Man City fell far that two years ago. No one even tried. He was like, we're not going to get nothing. Let's just try and get beat 2 0 and we, we'll all take that. And then last season, teams realised actually that they, they, there's a little bit of a soft underbelly to Manchester City, and we'll yeah. have a go. And they lost, they lost nine games. Like it, yeah. it's, it's mental to think if teams now decide, you know what, rather than sitting deep and, and taking the one two nil and maybe parking a bus, like we say, that Liverpool have in, invariably found a way through now. If teams go, you know what, let's, you know what, caution to the wind. There's a chance we might get be five three yet, but there's a chance yeah. we might win. We might win if. Four three, and that's yeah. the that's what would get to me. I I would be a little bit concerned now that if I'm, you know, the next if I'm Chelsea, Arsenal, Everton, whoever coming up over the next few weeks, I'd be like, there's no point really sitting back and trying to scrape on. Let's just try and go on the front foot and, and see what see what we get out of it. It's almost like buy a couple of lottery tickets and you either lose your dough or you hit the jackpot. And I think more teams will, will be fancying doing that now than yeah. they were, like you mentioned in that spell where we were just grinding teams into dust. Okay. I, 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 I get that point, Steve, I really do. And it's something that, you know, Emma Sanders said um, when we were 
just into the restart and you know she tweeted about it and it's like and i've expanded on that over over the last few months is that it takes a long time to get yourself to to a point where the team who's coming out next to you doesn't believe they can get a result and it's very very easily lost you know you come out and and you beat them before you start it took us three years to get to that point so i i fully agree with stay on that but again just to caveat it slightly it's one game in the Mm -hmm. games that matter and you know we won yeah, and we won, and we won. And so, and so I do, I do feel like three victories with three clean sheets, and you probably put that to bed. But you know, why I agree with this is you do need to go out and get the three clean sheets soon because I think it will be a, it'll be a, more than a, a minor concern if we don't do that. And also, let's not forget if teams want to come and have a go at Liverpool, good. That's yeah. not the type of games we struggle in. We struggle when teams actually fucking decide not to do that. If teams think they can get something from us, all the best. You know, they might get a goal or two, but it, 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 I, I don't see that as a fucking major problem for us, if I'm being honest. Liverpool's biggest test this season is that more teams won't do that and more teams will go, actually, we're just going to sit in and do we have, because we don't necessarily have the level of uh, attacking depth that City have. City are not our City. Go on, park the bus, and we'll just put we'll put six attacking, six, seven attacking players on the pitch, and we'll spend 90 minutes, and we'll, we'll twat you everywhere. Liverpool go, ah, right, OK, well, what we'll do is we'll pass the ball around the midfield for a bit, and then we'll work it wide, and then we'll cross it, and then that doesn't work, and then blah, 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 you know, and then we, we, we do we, we, more, more of the games that we, we struggled through. We not necessarily didn't win last season, came about in those circumstances the other thing that's worth pointing out is that every time we come back from an international break the common thread is they're not ever quite as good nobody's nobody's really you know said it in quite as cut and dry away if we played the first two games of the season then had an international break and then there are some defensive lapses after it we go oh we're always a bit shit after international breaks you know we last season we played Norwich, not as mentioned. Norwich created far more off their own back, of their own abilities and own skills against a Liverpool side that was ready for the, you know, or at least a defence that was ready for the season than this much vaunted lead side who were meant to have this you know incredible unstoppable version of play and all this kind of stuff. And and, and Liverpool were f- just far less ready for this game than they were for the game for the game this time a year ago. So there's again, as with anything. You can. I think there's enough. There's enough there to kind of to to make it to make a narrative. But I don't think there's really enough there at the moment to to truly know exactly where Liverpool stand. But um, I think we can all agree, Joe, Joe Gomez. Yeah. <laughs> Steve probably. Doesn't. Probably. No. I, 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 would, I would pick Matip personally. Um, we had some super <laughs> chats in while we've been where, while we've been doing this. Scott Hawks, twenty five US dollars. Scott, thank you so yeah, much. Um, looking forward to Mo against Chelsea's defence. I think Gomez for uh, for Timo Werner's pace would be ideal. Though I think Matip is superb. I, I actually agree. I do agree with that one. Um, Dark Brew, who gives uh, five New Zealand dollars. Um, playing Joe into form has more of an upside than giving Matip more game time this early we know what Joe can do more games more confidence and that, in case that's kind of what you were kind of alluding to before I mean look Matip's 29 and Gomez is 23 um, you know what you I, I think it kind of counter to what Darby's saying there I think you know exactly what you're getting from Matip I just don't I don't think we know quite good I think we suspect Joe Gomez can be really good but we don't quite know how good he can be just yet yeah, we, we were doing the final word um, yesterday, weren't we? And I think I described it like this. Um, you know, I think Joel's floor is higher than Joe's, but I think Joe's ceiling is higher than Joel's. I should probably use surnames when I'm doing these types of things, I've realised. <laughs> um, because that will make it a lot easier for everyone to follow along. But I do, I think Joel Matter, you know, at 29 years old, in the peak of his powers, is probably just better than Joe Gomez, but there's more upside to playing Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just a counterpoint here, Luke Doran um, in the comments in Matip should play against Chelsea because we can't risk uh, can't Gomez risk we can't risk Gomez making a mistake. I think what he's trying to say there. Um, I get I get all that. I think I, I but I think what we saw um, stay is Trent and Hendo play that game because they need the minutes because I think they're first teamers. Matip needs the minutes. 
but he doesn't play in that game. And I think that tells you a little bit about the pecking order at the moment. And maybe it's just that Matip's just not, you know, it, it's just a little bit too much. He only got 45 minutes against Blackpool, didn't he? Um, but I, I, I suspect that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be throwing Matip in on that little game time in that game. That's, we've got the League Cup to come. I, I, don't be shocked when he starts that one. Yeah, I think the, the pace point is valid against Chelsea because te- that's Timo Werner's game. He is going to make that running behind. Um, I, like I say, I don't think it's the biggest decision in the world. I, it's kind of like, in, there's a few options in the field where you play one or two, either or, and you're like, yes, yeah, and it's not the end of the world. I agree with what you say, by the way, is that the manager, Joe Gomez, is, is Jürgen Klopp's first choice. He just is. We're, we're arguing, a little, well, having a discussion, should he be? But he is. It's like that. That's the, that's what it is. The manager has gone with Joe Gomez, um, and that's his decision, and that's that's what he goes with. And it's hard to argue with it. Like I say, you are splitting here, so I wouldn't change it for Chelsea. I'm I'm of the belief that Matip is the one who I would like long term, but right now I think it would be a bit meant a bit mad to just do it on the cut on this time. I think you're right. I think give him the League Cup, get him some minutes under his legs because all we've seen from Matip is 45 minutes against Blackpool, yeah. and that's all he's had. To throw him into Stamford Bridge away with Timo Werner, have it potentially cruel to be his fit and all this and all this going on around him. I mean that's hard that's hard for anyone. So I think I would stick with Gomez, but with a view that long term I would be looking personally just to get Matter back in the team. But like I say, I, I don't think it's like I'll stick your Matter in and all, all of a sudden Liverpool are gonna be ten percent better or whatever. It's it's fine, really fine margins. Yeah, and, it, and that, that you're right. That might be the case in a month's time when everyone's up to fitness and you can make a, a clear choice on it. But right now, Gomez is there and, and Matip, Matip just isn't. Um, okay, we're going to move things on a little bit then. Um, uh, this is Anfield reporting that, that you know Liverpool are still in the in the hunt for two more signings. Um, this is some very creative writing, and I, I, we love we love Matt. At the, at this is Anfield, but he's done a very good job to t- to spin this around. I mean, Liverpool signed a goalkeeper, uh, a, a young Brazilian <laughs> goalkeeper, and in the Athletic article, um, James mentions about a Liverpool side. And sorry, if anyone can hear this, they're cutting the grass outside. It's so annoying. Um, um, a lot will depend on the amount of cash Liverpool can generate from sales, uh, and in the, the the two biggest cr- uh, priorities are another senior centre back and a wide attacker. Um, Sam, if if Liverpool if Liverpool just did that. So say we, we clear out a bunch of the what I, I, I don't want to call it deadwood because it's not like we've got a bunch of like thirty five year old hangers on at the club anymore. Shakiri, deadwood. Sh- yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Shakiri. Yeah. You're right. I apologise. It's, it's Shakiri. Deadwood. <laughs> Oh yeah, we haven't got any thirty-five-year-old hangers yeah. on. Um, the, um, would you be happy? You know, another centre half and a, and, a, and a wide forward. I mean, that precludes the signing of Thiago. I mean, does it matter who they are, or does it does it need to does it need to be absolute stupendous quality for you to be satiated by that? The Thiago thing, I've talked about loads of times personally. If we're going to keep Genie, get him to sign a new deal, I don't think we should buy Thiago. I just don't see the value in having eight midfielders. Curtis Jones came on. He's clearly part of Klopp's plans, clearly. Yeah. So what's the... It just doesn't make sense. If you're going to spend that much money, you look elsewhere. Steve's going to snarl me through the camera now and probably punch me, but I'm, I'm with the other journalists that have said, including James Pearce, actually, which surprises me because... I've seen numerous times that Liverpool aren't going to buy a centre half, and we're happy with our sort of setup of three number one sort of players you can play all the time, plus the option of Fabinho and the young lads. The back, I've seen that mentioned loads of times. So this now, how's it? Uh, sorry, so how's Danny Ward doing as Liverpool's first choice goalkeeper? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, you've got to take it a pinch of salt, but so we're here and we're not going to now, we're here and we're looking at it, and and like. My view is, if we were all rich and famous and everyone was in the stadiums and we were generating loads of money and blah, 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 then, yeah, I'm sure we would go out and spend 20 million quid on a guy who's going to play 10 games this season and, and, and you know, probably leave in two years. But for me, it doesn't, doesn't add up in this current climate, in, in our squad setup. We get rid of your Deadwood, which is, in my opinion, your Shaqiris and, and, and your, and your um, Carries, and you sell your young, you know, potential Premier League players, which are Grucic, if you class the Bundesliga as a Premier League, which it is, I suppose, um, Wilson and maybe Brewster or Origi, then yeah, we're going to bring someone in. Me worry, me worry is that the biggest player who's been who's got a thigh injury at the moment is um, Saar. He's African, who plays for an African nation, and the African Cup of Nations is next January, not, not 
2021, 22. So we could end up with like playing the under 18s for a full month next year if we carry on signing players <laughs> from that continent. That worries me. So I'm really sort of torn. Do I want Thiago? Yeah, but under certain circumstances. Do I want a defender? Not really. I'd rather us go and spend all of our money on a forward if there was one out there, if we're not going to keep Brewster. So for me at the moment, there's still so many ifs that go with our transfer um, sort of dealings. And by the way, we're not signing Jack Grealish because he's just signed a five-year deal as we're speaking. So never mind. <laughs> it's absolutely gutted. Steve, if we signed, you know, Ishmael Saar, I mean, we we need to sign someone from a relegated side because that's part <laughs> of our, like, it's like, it's like just part of Edwards' contract, I think. It's like, it's like a challenge he sets himself every season. Who can I buy from the championship a relegated team to, and make into a world star? Um I it's mad how like I I'm looking at all looking at all the players and you hear and, and again you got Mbappe he's not happy at PSG and I'm I'm happy to kind of with the thing we're never Kylian Mbappe is never going to play for Liverpool and he he, he, look, he might do but I, I I I'm living in the world because what there's no point in not living in that world but I'm I'm weirdly happy like if we if we just picked up Saar he's not even that good he's fine isn't he he's quite, he is good but like I don't know I, I, I'd I be quite happy with that what about you yeah absolutely I think it'd be a really good deal actually I think it's one they, they, they might go for if, again I think we're all sitting here and we are just waiting for people to go they're not going to buy anyone yet and I don't I, it, a part of that is financial but also part of that is just sheer numbers like it's all I say you know just forget about Harry Wilson or Grewish but if no buys them they're here you know, they're here you've got to do, you have to, you've got to do something with them they've got so I think Personally, my guess, and this is just a guess, is that I think we'll see Wilson go and Gruwich go, potentially Brewster as well, whether that's a loan or payment, and then and then Liverpool will look to do something. Um, I think again, I think Saar is definitely in play. It sounds like he is anyway. I I disagree with Sam. We, we've had this conversation before. I think they should buy a centre back because I don't think any of the young lads are anywhere near ready or close to being ready. And there's a lot of games and a lot of spare time. So I would actually quite like Liverpool to do well in the domestic cups this year, um, and I don't think. Having Vandenberg or one of the other guys there is, is, is particularly helpful there. So I think they should come by a centre half. What's the profile for you then, Steve? Though for buying a centre half, what does that you know? You're you're you've got a big list in front of you. What are your search parameters? Uh, Ragnar Klavan from three years ago. Whoever that is, whoever he is in Europe somewhere. Get the scouting. One plus yeah. thirty-year-old fella. International. Yeah, exactly. Go and do that. Someone you can just drop. Who's not asked if he doesn't play that much. Where you can drop him in and know you're going to get a certain standard. Like Clavan was a bit crap, but but then he was better than he was better than throwing an 18 year old kid in. Um, again, I, I understand the argument about Fabinho, not for me. I don't think I want that either. Um, so that's what I'd do. I, I'd be looking at a new centre half and a, and a forward player if you could. Again, Thiago one. It, it, again, it's strange. He's a world class player, and your instinct is just go and buy him because he wants to play for Liverpool. He's dead good. And again. That's that's a very simplistic view, but I'm a very simplistic fella, so I'll say that. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, go and buy him, buy as many good players as you can get. Um, but I, I'll be honest, I, I think we are just waiting for the fact that hey, the, the window's October, so it gives you a bit more time. I think once once you move a few players out of the squad and off the bill and out of, out of Melwood or whatever, then you might see one or two. I think I think there's going to be a fairly big exodus from the pool actually over the next few weeks. We, we've already seen part of that already. I'd be amazed if. Grewich and Wilson were still on playing at Liverpool come October. Yeah. Whether that's loan or sale, I'd be amazed that either of those two are there. Yeah. I think there's there, I think Brewster's 50-50 at best and more edging towards going. Um Origi, I think there's a question about Origi as well. I think if someone came in with money for him, I think it'd be what Liverpool probably would look at it. And I imagine Team Soon that might be sniffing around him because he's a he's a, a goal scorer. Um once all that's done, then Liverpool can decide, you know, here's what we've got, who can we go and get? And in fairness for us, I think it, it would be easier to get deals done for, as Liverpool now than it was in the past. I think for so long, we were so worried that we'd leave it late and then Ian Eyre would be sat in some dodgy Ukrainian office and, you know, he, he would go, he would, he'd go looking for Conor Frianco or whatever and come on with a new bird. <laughs> whereas, whereas, whereas now I'd imagine if Mike Edwards goes to Watford for Saar, then yeah. he'll probably get Saar. Um, so and I think money. that... And a, yeah, and, and some, 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 some type of amazing deal in the process. So I think I'm a bit more confident. I will be very shocked. Again, this, we're not buying anybody nonsense. I will be very shocked if we don't if we get to October and we haven't bought at least one and probably two. 
I must admit, right, I, I'm looking at it and I, I, I kind of agree with Steve. I think we need a centre-half just because Vandenberg and Hoover don't look ready to me. Um, and I, I profile-wise, I get it. I get the Clavin thing. That's why I kind of like the links to this Omar Colley uh, from Sampdoria, a team that finished 15th in, in, in Serie A, a team that, you know, you could quite easily convince a centre-half to come and sit on the bench at the League Champions. Um, his release clause is around about 10.7, 10.8 million quid seems to be a good solid choice that can tie it over for a few years until Sepp and, and Kiana are probably ready to play so I, I like that and I think what, what we know I think for, about Liverpool's transfer dealings this year is it's sell to buy so if Liverpool don't sell anyone don't expect anyone to come in If uh, other than maybe a centre half if Klopp deems that that's a position that we need to sell because we actually sorry buy because we actually did sell Lovren um, the left back thing was obvious we needed cover for Andy wasn't it if Origi goes out, if Shakiri goes, if Wilson goes, if Brewster goes, then expect more than so, um, to be honest with you, because, you know, I think you get more than 40 million quid. I wouldn't be surprised, I'm just going to throw it out there, if Liverpool didn't sign an attacker, but a deal was done for Sancho for next summer. Just saying. Because agree, yeah. if Manchester United don't sign him for 120 million, he's on the market. And that actually changes this year's plans for me. I'm like, we thought he was going to go. Are you kidding me? Can we get into a position where we get him next year instead? Fucking let's try that instead. Because Sar's all right. Sar's all right, yeah. Sancho's amazing. Push the boat if you can get somebody like that. Sars are tied it over until somebody like Sancho becomes available, in my opinion. Um, but if Sancho's still available at the end of this transfer window, get working on it straight away. 6th of October, get working on it. You muted, Paul. You muted, Paul. On the mic itself? No? You're unmuted. You're muted. We can't hear you. I can't hear you at all. Can anyone else hear them, or is it just me? Oh. Right, okay. Uh, let's try and sort that out, Paul. Um, yeah, but that, what do you reckon to that then, Steve? I mean, would you go yeah. for Sancho next summer? <laughs> <laughs> I might ask me that. Of course I would. Uh, I, I'd buy everyone. I, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, you know, Brewster's millions when he has to spend all his dough to, to, to win it. That'd, that'd be me. I'd be buying everyone. I think that... I kind of get what you're saying in terms of me, but I still think we've got to focus on this season a bit as well. I mean, that's all well and good saying let's just jib it off and, and put the money towards. Like, we, kind of like what we did, we did with Naby Keita, wasn't it? We kind of foregone that attack on the field to get him the year after. Um, maybe it's just me putting a bit too much stock in this year, but Liverpool are in the position now where I think now you've got, you're got in the position to win now, so go and win now. You know I mean, what, what, are we, what are we gambling on the future for? You're gambling on keeping everyone fit in that front three again in a condensed season, and, and if you don't, then you're picking Debo Horigi, you know what I mean? And you ask him to do a job, showing them into a, into a side on the, on the left where Sark would be a better option to probably play in those wide areas. So it, it is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a coin flip, isn't it? Like what, what's your focus? Is it two years down the line or is it one year down the line? Is it right now and winning now? I'm edging towards let's just win the league now because it counts the same as winning it next year, you know what I mean? Where, whenever you win it, just go and win it. So I, I would be... I'd, be, I'd actually be quite disappointed if Liverpool don't do nothing up front or in forward areas just because I, I think it's hard on Dibba Horigi actually to, to shoe on him in to positions that he doesn't play in into a system that doesn't really suit him and then we all just absolutely leather him when it goes wrong and it's, it's kind of like if, if Origi's going to play then you've got to change something so, you know, change your system or change your setup. whereas I would like someone who can just slot into what we've got you know what I mean rather than changing three or four different things to, to, to suit your players coming in, let's just buy someone right now who can just slot in straight away, play 20 to 25 games, 15 sub-appearances off the bench, and everyone's happy. That would be my personal preference. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Here we go. Yes. Back in the <laughs> room. <laughs> go on, Sam. Your turn. Yeah, yeah. I was just dead interested, actually, just listening to that, and I agree with you, Chris, about next season. And I also agree with Steve. So I thought of... Now, is there a scenario where... Like, we all know... Yeah. What, we all know what's going to happen, right? That after this next couple of weeks, especially with the game start heating up, teams are going to get injuries and they're going to start panicking. Someone's going to lose two or three on the spin, whether it's West Ham, whether it's who else lost the weekend, West Brom, whether Leicester lose, whether Spurs lose again, and money's going to start getting spent. Now, you mentioned there three or four attackers, right? You can see where I'm going with this. Someone comes in and takes Shakiri for 15 mil. 
Origi, Brewster, the kind of money we've been asking for comes in for them. And we're left in a position where we've got three or maybe even four, including Wilson, forward, out the door. And we're sitting there on a, a decent amount of money or the opportunity to get a decent amount of money. Is there a chance that we actually say, do you know what? We've done more business or we can potentially do more business outgoings than we thought we could. We've actually now got a bigger pot and to change the, the landscape, what we're going for. Is there an opportunity where we go and sign a, someone between the value of Werner and Sancho? This window, should those panic buys kick in and we start getting offers for those kind of players? It's, it's, uh, the Werner stuff for me is, is, is what shows Liverpool's thinking. We were clearly in, in the market for Timo Werner, clearly. And I don't think that you... I mean, and maybe they think think Ishmael Sarr is, is is maybe he's the second choice, and we'll never, you know, we we can't know that. But I don't, I don't feel that he is. You know, there's there's too much of a significant difference, and it might be, you know, it wouldn't shock me if Liverpool had the ability if they wanted to go for someone bigger. But I just think the way that we've handled it so far, I don't think Liverpool will go big this window at all because I just think it's too. Look, we were meant to be trial and fans back in in what, two weeks time. Or from two weeks time in October, certainly mid October, they were talking to a month, and that's just not going to happen now. I can't see a world where that happens. So all of a sudden, you're looking at, you know, and this is pure speculation at this point, which is the same. It's the world we're in next year before we're looking at fans coming back in. I think Liverpool will will be as prudent as possible. I think they will sell to buy, but I think they will. I don't think SARS necessarily a, a holdover like we were like we were saying, but. You know, one of my, I think one of Manny and Salah is probably going to want to move on next summer. Either way, so I think we probably will have to go big next summer, regardless. And so you're going to need to buy another one anyway. So I think you buy Saar because he's there, and then you're still looking to get. I, I, I would get, I would do what Chris says there, get Sancho boxed off for next summer, and that way you're not fighting for a Mane replacement or a Salah replacement in the window when, in, in which you're selling them. Stay. Well, I was just saying we talk about going big, and I think we see going big as like the hundred and million pound players and stuff if Liverpool buy Saar for somewhere in the 40 to 45 million quid range he's like one of our top five most expensive players ever you know what yeah. I mean Liverpool, aren't, Liverpool don't really obviously Van Dijk is kind of the exception to the rule other than that Allison. you're looking around 50s and 60 you're, you're talking more 40 to 60 than 60 yeah. to 80 you, you know yeah. what I mean you're, you're talk, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lower range compared to like the ballpark figures of transfers nowadays that have been skewed ever since we we, we put that we made this happen because we sold Coutinho for all that money We've mm. kind of set a new bar in this in the transfer market now. I think PSG getting Neymar kicked it all off. We we contributed to it, and now that this is the world we're living in, you kind of reaping what you sow. So, I think if if they do go and get a saw, that is a significant investment for the pool historically. You know what I mean? It's not like they're saying, "Oh, we're just going to buy some lads." We're not buying a clavan up front. You know that's yeah. what that's a that's what like you know, I don't know Maxi Rodriguez on a free is that or Jovanovic or someone on a, on a cheap deal. If they buy Saar, it'll be a significant investment, and it'll be one that is a long-term investment. It's not just that he'll do us over until yeah. we can go and buy James. It's Sancho. not us. It's a big deal. It's not us going out and splashing sixty million on uh, on Wilf Saha this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, it's a, it's a, that, which is he's not good enough to play for us. But he's expensive, but he would do, yeah, because you could do worse than throw him in, but you're only getting a what a season or two out of him before inevitably you've got to sack you've got to sack him off. Um right, I've got a couple of comments in. Joe Murray saying serious lack of decent centre backs out there, especially ones you'd be fine to be third, fourth choice, and that is the big concern. And that'll be the and I wonder whether that's why again there's been no rush, is that they're running the rule as best they possibly can. Because there is no super rush at the moment. I mean, look, if if we if two lads go down this week, that would necessitate a little bit more a, a pacey movement in this direction but I think he's given Vandenberg and Cometio in particular as much chance as possible just to go can I can we get away with this because I do think we, there is a balancing act um, just see uh, Heiken and St James Pierce is also saying Tiago rumours are probably coming from his own representatives uh, Scott Hawks back in uh, again thank you Scott uh, honestly I almost wish we'd signed someone just to tamp down the bollocks in the chat for each watch along yeah absolutely <laughs> um, oh. Kind of yeah. whisper, it, whisper it quietly, but like Dejan Lovren was a really good choice for fourth centre half. And we might not, you know, what I mean, like we might not find one who's as good as him to be fourth choice. And we had to get rid of him because he wanted to go and the baggage and stuff. But like, this is the world, Steve. This is the this is what yeah. this is this, this is the era Liverpool are now in in our development. Is we first team lads 
get superseded by better lads. They become your squad players. They know your club inside and out. They're fully integrated, international calibre. And then if they leave, you're left with the world of having to buy backups. And yeah. buying backups is a fucking crapshoot. You've got no idea whether they're going to settle in because you're not buying true quality. You know, you're, be- you're always better to buy. You're either better to buy young and build, so at least you, you've got a, a, a grip on how their development goes, or you buy proven a, a, as close to proven quality as you can. And that's why it's a very. I, that's why I don't think Liverpool have gone mad. Why, you know, because they haven't got the money to take a gamble at the moment, so they're having to be a bit more sensible with what they're doing, which is which is fucking fine. Jesus Christ. This is not like six years ago, seven years ago, where we were like, I really want this. I want us to do it a good, the right way, but I don't think it's possible. It's like, we've done it the right way, uh, and it's worked. Bell- oh, no, it? And look, a good point here though from Harrison Mason Jones in City had three centre halves last year, lost Laporte, had to play Fernandinho as a centre back and lost his functionality in midfield. Now I think he's actually slightly wrong on that. Fernandinho was always going to play centre half. It yeah. was just that and, and because Rodri was bought in to to take his role in that and he was because that was the talk at the end of the season before beforehand but losing Laporte was the big blow but of course my take on this is that and then you know you, if Van Dijk gets injured Liverpool are going to be worse because you can't have a there's no such thing as a Van Dijk un, back up you can't it, it, as if there's, if there's not enough quality in centre halves, you're definitely not getting a back up lad who's half your, as your good as it choice centre half isn't the best defender in the world Unless it's Dejan Lovren and self-proclaimed. <laughs> uh, um, I didn't say didn't think they were the best centre half of the world. I said they're not. Um, Chris Pajak, the question that I was going to ask you 20 minutes ago before this all nearly went tits up. Um, Sheffield United come to you with £20 million for Rian Brewster. Permanent deal with the buyback clause, which can be whatever you want. Um, are, you taking, are you taking that? Are you letting Brewster go on a permanent deal? I, I don't know, Paul, is the honest answer, because I don't know what's lined up. You know, if you can guarantee me that I can spend that 20 million plus a little bit more money on somebody who's better, then, yeah, I'm going to take the deal. Um, because if Klopp is entertaining this idea that Brewster will go out, there's something wrong there. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it doesn't mean that he's a bad player, but it might be that he's a bad fit. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing that Klopp keeps saying is, you know, we want more out of him. He is that he's a lethal finisher, blah blah blah. But if he's not doing the job that's available in our side, and that would be the number nine role that Bobby plays, they're completely different players. Now I think Brewster's brilliant, and I think his finishing's brilliant, and I think he looked great at Swansea last season. But does that mean he can play up from for Liverpool? No, it's the, those things aren't the, not mutually exclusive. You know what I mean? It just sometimes the player isn't right for the system. It's like. Giroud's always been a good player. I think he's a. I think he's been a really good player. I, I think he might be a better fit for Liverpool than, you know, Rian Brewster. Now, yeah. Rian Brewster's clearly the one you take over Giroud because he's fucking th- 12, 13 years younger than him or whatever. But Giroud's a really good fit for the system. Same as Bobby's a really good fit for the system. Maybe it was a bad choice of of, of using <laughs> a little bit. Of <laughs> no, but I take your point you know on that. What I mean? is that- we, I think there was a there was a, a crop of amazing talent that came through the the, the won the World Cup with England the at the, the youth level. Sam and you look at Jaden Sancho, you look at Phil Foden. Um, Hello, is he there? Can anyone else hear him? He said what? Phil Foden. I had him up to two, and then he disappeared. Still here? Cool. Yeah, got you. I can hear you now. Yeah. You know, Phil Foden and all that kind of stuff. You've got these group of talents, so you would have you, you. And Chris is right. Brewster's probably as good as them. You know, if he plays in a system that work for him, we might be seeing him reaching the levels that these lads are starting to reach. But it just might be that Liverpool's not the not the club for him to scale those heights. Yeah, and, and you know what? I think this might actually be as well. And I think we're we're all looking at the side of like uh, of Klopp here in Liverpool and. And, and the managerial side of things. Why did Lovren leave? Because he wants to play more football, more regularly. Now, Rian Brewster's gone out on loan, scored a hell of a load of goals. don't even think he took penalties for them either, I don't know. Um, looked really good. He's bagged loads of goals in the last two pre-seasons. He actually saved us from embarrassment this pre-season against Red Bull. There's a chance here that he's gone into the manager's office and said, look, boss, I'm delivering on every level here. You know, where, where am I in your plans? Because, you know, with all due respect, 
you make Divock Origi there, he's got five goals in 40 apps last year. Like, I'm scoring five goals a month. Like, you know, am I in your plans this year? And if Klopp's saying, well, you need to develop this, you need to develop, he might be saying, well, listen, I've got nine, my agent's telling me I've got nine Premier League clubs here that are after me. I'm ready to play first team football. I think I'm better than Mason Greenwood. I want to play for England. And to yeah. be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case in so many words that Rian Brewster's ready, and I think he is ready to be a first team footballer at a Premier League club. And at Liverpool, as much as I, as a fan, want to keep him and want him to be part and develop and be our number nine when Bobby gets too old or whatever, or join with him, I actually think there's a possibility here that Rian Brewster's outgrown his position in the squad and he's not getting the guarantees from the manager because of his allegiances to Origi and Shakiri to actually fulfil them. So we, he probably leaves more on his terms than ours. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of things, isn't there? I think if he it's can he, if he could play wide as well, and the fact that we've seen no hint of him being used wide, which is where he should be, you know, like I think if there was a real plan to use him in more, to more to get games, get games. And look at Curtis Jones, been played in all, all kinds of positions in midfield and in the front three in the cup games and stuff that he's had he's had games in. See Nico Williams used at left back here and there. We 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 try to get players on the pitch where we can, and. It just says to me that he, he, he's a number nine, and that that again, I don't you don't know what the what, again what the what the the book balancing's going on behind the scenes, and it might come down to and we've all done it. It's kind of kind of what you were saying a bit there, Chris. Like the, on footy manager, there's a brutal element. If you really want someone, you're desperate. And you think there's one guy you really really need. You look around at how you're generating the money for it, and if no fucker's going to buy Divock Origi. But there's there's a queue of clubs willing to pay twenty million pounds for Rian Brewster. As much as you might think, actually, I'd rather keep him around for another year and develop him. I mean, Steve, we might just need twenty million pounds now. To an extent, yeah. But I, I I'm more with Sam. I actually, I actually think it's a combination of both. I think he wants to go and play, and I think I think the decision's been made by Liverpool. That, that's fine. Like I, I don't think he is what Klopp's after in in a in a, in a forward player, and that's not that he's a bad player. I just don't think he's what he's what we're after now. He's Klopp says, you know, he, I'm not surprised by his finishing. He's an amazing finisher. But that's kind of it. You know, I mean, there's no, it's like I say, the, the impact of not having five subs and a larger bench might be play into this as well. And that mm. you, the, he can't, he, the lad can't even get on a bench. You know, he wasn't on the bench at the weekend because he's got Klopp. Klopp would what? Can anyone else hear him? He's no. gone. Yeah, I know. Anyway, Chris. Go on, stay here, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got up to Klopp. Sorry, so, yeah. So, so if, if Klopp thought Brewster was better than Rigi, then Rigi wouldn't have been on the bench too. They Brewster would. So, in, in the manager's pecking order now, we we know that we know that's the situation. Whether he's right or wrong, that's what he thinks. So, we've got to remember Brewster joined Liverpool from Chelsea. He left. He was an ambitious kid. He left Chelsea to get games at Liverpool. He hasn't really got them. So, would you be shocked if he's looking there going, "Hang on a minute." I've got Newcastle, I've got Sheffield United, I've got Aston Villa, I've got Leeds, I've got all these teams who want me. Let's go and do what Danny Ings did. Move to a, a smaller, lesser club who are going to play me more often. And, and Danny Ings was playing for England the other day. You know what I mean? That, there's a, there's a, that's, that could be possible. What it is. We're all thinking, where is Bomb and Brewster out? Well, maybe Brewster's just as agent and him looking at it going, this is the time to get a move. Everyone needs a striker. You're a hot shot having come off a really good loan. Here's your chance to you know strike while the iron's hot. And it looks like Klopp's going, yeah, I understand that. Like he did with Danny Ings. You're good, and I'd keep you in your But if you want to go, Sands, I'm all right with that as well. Yeah. Great. Two great points there. I think Sam's one, first of all, I think is a brilliant point. I think, he, and, and if you think back, he wanted to go about the same time Sancho maybe was looking at Dortmund and stuff, and there was rumours of him wanting to talk and talking to Sancho and stuff there. So that's been playing on his mind a couple of years probably that he could have been playing first team football for somebody. And Steve's point about the subs bench there, I think, is absolutely spot on. We were talking about it with Jim McCast the other day, Paul, weren't we? And how many sub appearances Jim McCast going to get because Milner can play left back and right back, so Klopp would rather have Milner on the bench. Now, Jim Cash was signed probably when we did think there were going to be more subs this season. And maybe, you know, regardless, Jim Cash is the backup left back, whether Milner gets on the bench or Jim Cash. Jim Cash is there because he's, he's Robertson's understudy. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be on the bench if he doesn't give him the option of, of playing a right back. So the Brewster thing with the number nine and, and all that and not playing the wings is absolutely spot on as well. But I, I, I think I think Sam's right on this. I, th- I do think there's probably more than meets the eye. And I think Liverpool would rather him go out on low but the conditions that Liverpool like to send loans out 
to probably aren't going to be met this time around because Liverpool like them to spend money to take the loan a la Divock Origi where we got like was it 7 million quid or something for him to go to Wolfsburg for the season that's probably not happening in this current financial climate um, plus how much of these teams are they going to pay 100% of the wages are they going to guarantee his wage his game time all that type of stuff it might just be easier and better and so to back your point Paul where there's a figure and that figure's met and it works out better for Liverpool this season I just think again, if you get a decent buyback in there, I mean, like the Danny Ing stuff. If uh, after the last season, I was like, oh god, if there was like a twenty million buyback clause on Danny Ings, you'd buy Danny Ings back in the summer and get him because you know what I mean. Because he's he's now done it and proven it, and maybe you just need that. Players do need that, like the safety net taken away almost. Of like you're not, it's not a loan. You know, you you've not made it, Liverpool. You're done. Go and go and build yourself up elsewhere, and you know, you, okay, you've got the buyback there as a thing, but you know, we, we we've had that before. We've never had to activate one, and we've never even come close to needing to activate one. I mean, Jordan Ives is gone, hasn't it? You know, and I'm I'm sure Solanke had one as well, and there will have been a couple others that, down the line. I, that's what I, maybe that's one thing you say to Bruce is that your time's not now. Be your time might come in two or two or three years. He's not really the place to develop him. I like him. I think he's great. I really I want us to have one of those lads, one of those super hot, talented, up-and-coming young English lads. I mean, it's just going to have to be Harvey Elliott, isn't it? Um, the right-back right isn't Bob Yeah, well, yeah, I know, you're right, yeah, right. So we'll just have to, we'll just have to <laughs> yeah, set up yeah. for the best right-back in the world. Yeah. Oh, best, no. A scouser that's going to be the best centre mid in the world. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Um, brilliant. OK, well, listen, thanks, everyone, for your, your input on, on that this week. I really enjoyed that. Uh, if you want more from us, uh, do sign up to the redmentv.com. Some fantastic shows. The Reds um, transfer roundup show, which was for YouTube members, is now back on the redmentv.com. The final word has replaced it for YouTube memberships. So if you want more uh, in-depth details, chat around what Liverpool are doing in the transfer market for the next few weeks until it closes do subscribe to the redmentv.com uh, I've said that plenty of times I'm going to say it one more time the redmentv.com go over there I'll see you there we're recording that show tomorrow uh, drop a like on the video give a five star review if you're listening on podcasting apps uh, and yes we'll be back with another Redmen podcast next week Ta-da.